So let me get you to react to what we just heard from Paula Reed, and that is that prosecutors met today with former police commissioner Bernie Carrick. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, it tells us that when prosecutors say their investigation is ongoing, it is indeed ongoing. Now, the way this is supposed to work is once you've indicted Donald Trump, as they have already, the ongoing investigation is only supposed to relate either to different charges or to different people. And hearing what Tim Parlator just said to Paula Reed, it certainly sounds like they're focused on Rudy Giuliani. We know he's been identified in the indictment as co-conspirator one. Parlator seems to think that they're not likely to charge Rudy Giuliani. I'm not sure I agree with that assessment, but we shall see. Ellie, meantime, when it comes to this 5 p.m. deadline for Trump's team to respond to the judge about publicly sharing evidence, Trump claimed on his Truth Social page today that I shouldn't have a protective order placed on me because it would impinge upon my right to free speech. But, Ellie, that's not what this is about. I mean, the argument from prosecutors is that if Trump, quote, were to begin issuing public posts or using details or, for example, grand jury transcripts obtained in discovery here, it could have a harmful chilling effect on witnesses or adversely affect the fair administration of justice in this case. So given that, how do you expect the judge to rule on this? I do think the judge is going to issue some sort of protective order. It's important to understand what this would be and what this would not be. What this would do is limit Donald Trump's ability to take certain pieces of evidence and put them out in the public. What it would not do is limit Donald Trump's ability to see the evidence. It would not limit Donald Trump's ability to use any evidence in his own defense at trial. And it would not necessarily limit Donald Trump's ability to speak about the case publicly. So it seems like what prosecutors are asking for here is fairly narrow and tailored to protecting witnesses and a jury pool. And I think given the judge's insistence on a very quick briefing schedule, she's likely to grant that. In the meantime, we're beginning to see how Trump's legal team will defend him in this case. Over the weekend, his attorney, John Laura, was all over the, the morning shows, arguing that Trump's actions did not constitute a crime, but instead, he said, an aspiration. Listen. What President Trump did not do is direct Vice President Pence to do anything. He asked him in an aspirational way. Asking is covered by the First Amendment. So we know from the indictment and subsequent interviews that Mike Pence and his aides did not interpret Trump's actions as aspirational. But, Ellie, is this a legitimate legal argument, at least, for his lawyers to be making? Well, in theory, it is a legitimate legal argument. I just don't know that it's going to hold up given the facts of the case here. If indeed a person merely said, hey, public official, I hope you will do things this way or that way, that's hard to make that into a crime. But I think Jack Smith's position is Donald Trump did much more than merely benignly ask Mike Pence to do something. He pressured him to do something that they both understood was unconstitutional, was against the law. And it's important that we not sort of parse out each fact on its own and say, is that a crime in and of itself? Prosecutors are going to urge the jury, look, it's not just about the conversation between Donald Trump and Mike Pence. That is part of the broader fraud and the broader conspiracy that we've charged here. What did you make of Laura also saying that they believe Mike Pence will be one of their best witnesses at this trial? Boy, I, I presume he knows more than I do, but based on the indictment, I don't think that's correct. It's clear that prosecutors are relying on Mike Pence as one of their key witnesses. There are paragraphs that seem to be based on Mike Pence's testimony mm -hmm. and his handwritten notes, including this incident where Donald Trump said to Mike Pence, quote, you're too honest. And if we need another indicator, Mike Pence just said the other day that he was approached by Donald Trump's, and I quote Mike Pence here, gaggle of crackpot lawyers. That doesn't sound to me like a witness who's going to do any good for Donald Trump. Let's turn down to Atlanta and the case in Fulton County. Uh, do you expect this to be a sprawling case with many people charged or a more narrow indictment like the one we saw last week? Oh, it's going to sprawl. I think that's quite clear. Fonnie Willis has been investigating this case for two and a half plus years now. Remember, the special grand jury foreperson came out and told us that they had recommended indictments of over a dozen people. That doesn't necessarily mean Fonnie Willis is going to follow that recommendation or that the actual grand jury is going to do that. But all indications are that this will be a very broad indictment. And the Wall Street Journal is interesting to see them report today that, that lawyers who have worked with Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis in the past expect her to invoke Georgia's RICO Act. What does that mean? So RICO stands for Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations. There was originally a federal law passed to that effect, and now a lot of states, including Georgia, have followed suit. Essentially, as a prosecutor, if you're going to charge RICO, you have to show, first of all, the existence of a criminal enterprise, meaning an organization 
committing a pattern of racketeering activity, meaning two or more connected crimes. So it can be tougher for prosecutors to show, but if you can, the advantage is you get to charge the whole case and explain the entire enterprise to the jury. And I should note, the Georgia RICO law carries a mandatory minimum of five years in prison, meaning any person convicted of that has to go to prison for five years. That's actually even more severe than the federal RICO statute. Wait, quickly, do you, do you think that's what we'll see from her? I do, based on all the reporting and based on all the other indicators, yes.